Hey guys, AMD's finally got the successor to the 6000 series, and we're gonna start with the lower end of the top end, which is the 7900 XT. There's also XTX, um, but that's an extra $100. So this is 7900 XT starting at $899, and this is the founder's edition directly from AMD. Let's open up and have a look what we've got inside. This time around, we still have the three fan design, and actually it's still about the same size as the old card, but we'll put this to the side for now. Let's go through the box first. In the box itself, I, I like how it opens to this presentation. Inside, we've got an extra little slot that opens up. It's kind of cute. And we've got the, the, the usual documentation inside. It's actually a kind of a neat way of hiding it inside. I like the presentation. Now let's have a look at the card itself. So it's still a two and a half slot design and we are still using two eight pin connectors like the more standard connections the connections don't really matter uh, it's just more important to plug them in fully and these connectors are much easier to plug in and know when they've actually been fully secured it is all kind of stealth black obviously the three fans at the top on the side where next to the power uh, we have these little red stripes uh, it's kind of reminiscent of the sports cars, which shouldn't really be sports cars. I really do like this black color. In the last generation, AMD's released a black version. It was like a limited edition version. And now it seems that the actual default um, found edition cards would be in black. So that's kind of cool. And we have a bit more of the red accents at the back with the radiant sign. And that's really it. It's clean. It's got some angles to it, so it's not too boring, uh, especially in comparison to the last generation. Last gen it was cool, dense, but uh, not as classy. It still is a two and a half slot design, just like the older card, the 6900 XT here. And if you look at it from the side, you will actually see that this is a little bit wider. Um, it's obviously a lot more square as well. So we have rounded corners on this end, well, actually on both sides. So they're kind of rounding the corners over here, just kind of visual uh, from the visual side. This one is a lot more square. This is a, bit, a little bit wider, but the new card is a little bit taller. It's a trading back and forth. As a comparison, if I put a 3080 Strix on the side of it, this is a 3080, not even a 4080, this is a 3080. Uh, these cards look like, well, as if they're 6700 XT, which is obviously basically a toy in, in this kind of generation. The one thing that's very different on these cards is actually the connections at the back. We have HDMI 2.1, USB Type-C, and two Display 2.1, which is a new standard that are hopefully gonna be adapted very quickly on all different kind of monitors. Uh, which provide a lot more bandwidth for the next generation of the monitors. At the moment, there are not monitors yet, or at least I haven't seen any live, uh, but they'll be coming out very soon, which will be able to support much higher bandwidths. Uh, so you could go 4K, 240, I think 4K, 480 FPS, or 8K, 120 or 180. Um, so there's plenty of bandwidth there, at least for the port. Um, these cards won't be able to provide that amount of data. Uh, but I'm sure we'll get there at some point in the near future. With the new generation, AMD has gone down the chiplet design. Uh, it's similar to what they're doing on their CPU lineup, but their chiplets are much bigger because their GPU core still needs to be much bigger. What they've done is they've uploaded as much as possible into the little chiplets, therefore needing to make the overall package somewhat smaller. What this does is makes it a lot cheaper to manufacture because the yields could be much greater. With that in mind, what they're able to achieve is, well, cheaper manufacturing. Um, they could have had two choices, increase their profit margins or reduce the overall cost. And in this generation, because they're clearly aware that they can't really compete with Nvidia in terms of performance, what they're doing is they're competing with Nvidia with performance per dollar. And we'll see more of that in the upcoming review. So make sure to subscribe for that. But essentially what they've done is um, they've actually made the top of the line card of this generation, the 7900 XTX, $100 cheaper than the top of the line of last generation, which was the 6950 XT. Uh, and that's an interesting approach. What I think AMD is trying to do is appeal to more budget-friendly gamers. And it's budget-friendly is a loose word. This is still a $900 card. 
but if more gamers get this card and say, well, it works and it works well for them, uh, there's a higher chance that they'll buy the next or maybe two generations after the MD card, at least consider it. So that's an interesting approach and I think that might actually work out for them, uh, but we'll have to see about that after the main review. Let's get deeper into the specs itself. This card supports 20 gigabytes of GDDR6 VRAM. We got 80 megabytes of Infinity Cache, as well as AV1 encoder. This brings AMD in line with the other two players, both Intel and Nvidia. And it's nice to know that there's now three players in the market. Um, let's just see how their AV1 implementation stands up to the other two. The other thing, as I mentioned earlier, is this card is two and a half slots. So it's compatible to more cases. Um, shouldn't really be a feature, but well, it is. As far as advancements go, in these cards we now feature the new 5 nanometer GPU die and 6 nanometer memory cache die. This plus general architectural changes according to AMD should lead to over 50% performance improvement over the previous gen 6950 XT. AMD has also made pretty big claims on their ray tracing performance numbers, but we'll need to see that in a full review. Overall, as far as looks and feels go, I, I like this new black design. Um, I wish they this was the case on the previous generation as well, not just on a limited edition, but uh, it looks kind of clean. Let's not waste any more time and let me just get on with the benchmarking so I can provide you the actual review in time. Uh, as I said, subscribe and we'll see you guys in the next one.